Cool. Well, it looks like we got some people joining us. I think we're still getting uh, set up on Facebook Live, so we'll get the uh, the presentation officially started here in just a couple more minutes. Um, in the meantime, if everybody wants to let us know where you're watching from, it's always fun to see uh, what parts of the country or even world uh, we're sharing sharing our Zoom with uh, today. So if you want to let us know in the chat where you're watching from, that's always a lot of fun. And just so everybody knows, we're doing something a little bit different today. Um, today's presentation is a little bit more meant for brokers or, or the leadership of brokerages. Um, I think if you're an individual agent, you'll probably still get some benefit from today's presentation. But I do want to be upfront about that. I mean, a lot of what we're talking about today um, is a little bit more geared towards, hey, somebody who's running a team, somebody who's running a brokerage with a bunch of agents that they're managing, and how to get those people to start utilizing video, um, which can be can be challenging, doesn't have to be challenging, um, but certainly can be. So that's gonna be what we're what we're talking about here today. So let's see, we got, uh, Jake said we're live. So I think we're, we're good to go on the presentation, but I'm seeing uh, New Jersey, Austin, uh, Big Island, Hawaii. All right. Eileen, Hawaii. Eileen, I'm officially jealous. Stop it. Stop rubbing <laughs> of it in. Of course. Um, well, I think Hawaii is probably the farthest away for, for today, at least from what I saw so far. So thanks everybody for joining us. Um, let's go ahead and dive in. We are going to be covering some good stuff for you today. Um, so basically what I want to do is I want to start out first by talking about just a, a sort of a fundamental truth when it comes to video. And I think that uh, if you're running a team of people, if you are a broker, if you're managing other agents and you want to see them making more video, understanding this concept we're going to talk about first is probably one of the most important things you can do because this is how you're going to get buy-in from your team, right? And if they aren't bought in, if they don't have um, a sense of this being really important, then they're going to have a hard time doing it because video tends to be intimidating, right? So here's what I just want to start out with, which is that video is a form of communication, all right? Video is not a marketing tool. You can use it for marketing, but I think thinking of it as a marketing tool is incredibly limiting. And I think it actually makes getting started with video way harder than it needs to be, all right? So what you see on the screen here is sort of just a little bit of a visual representation of this. Oh, hey, Tristan, how's it going? What's up? So we're just we're just kicking things off with a quick uh, intro to, to the concepts of video, but I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely have some questions for uh, you and Jeff today because we're talking about how to motivate your agents to start making more videos. I know both of you guys have done a good job of that on your team. So, um, but just to, to wrap up kind of the thought here on this first slide, the the idea here is that video is just the next step, right? So we've we've gotten used to using email, right? I mean, some of you can probably think back to a point where email was new and people weren't sure how to use it and they were resisting signing up for an email account. You know, it's been quite a while since then. Um, we can probably imagine a time where most people didn't have cell phones, right? Text messaging was, uh, when I remember when we first got cell phones, the big deal was, I don't know if I want people to be able to get a hold of me any time of the day, right? I don't know, it's gonna be annoying having people being able to bother me all day. And that might be true, but we also have seen the benefits of that, right? How much easier is it is to communicate? How much better you can manage your business on the go, right? You're not tied to a particular location anymore. So they always, these things all have trade-offs, but what we're starting to see is that video is really emerging as that newest form of communication. And I think you should know that a little bit inherently from Zoom, right? Like the pandemic basically forced us all to get on Zoom and do a ton of Zoom meetings. And you know we're, we're doing an example of that right now, but that's just one example, right? So Zoom is, I kind of think of as a replacement for face-to-face -face communication. It does a really, really good job. It's not a perfect replacement, but it's awfully, awfully close. It's a lot more efficient. We don't have to travel to meet with each other anymore, but there's all kinds of other videos, right? There's social media videos. There's one-to-one -one video communication. So just taking your, your phone, which honestly, I think this is more of a camera than it is a phone anymore. I mean, there's literally five cameras in the latest phone model that I bought. So you take your, your camera, you record a quick message and you send it to an individual person, right? That's not performing at all. That's not putting something out on social media um, or trying to be branded or fancy or worrying about video production. It's just literally communicating in a form that's better than other forms, right? So I want you to start thinking about that. I want you to start thinking in your business and your agent's businesses, where are some of the places that they could start to replace what they're currently doing with video, right? 
Um, have you ever had somebody send a text or an email and had whatever they were trying to communicate misunderstood, right? The tone of voice was misunderstood or somebody took offense to a text that obviously wasn't meant to be offensive. Well, when you replace that with a video and I can see that person's face and I can hear their tone of voice and I can watch their facial expressions, it's going to reduce the ability to misunderstand what that person's trying to say, right? So I wanted to start here. We're gonna give you a whole bunch of advice on some different things you can do to get your agents excited about this stuff, but this is the core of everything else, right? Is that you have to help your team understand that this is the next step in human communication. And the longer that they resist that, the worse they're going to be communicating. As your customers start to get video communication from other businesses, because this is happening now, right? Some businesses are leading with video now, they're gonna start to expect it. So if they got a video update from their mechanic on the status of their car, they're gonna start to wonder why their real estate agent isn't doing the same thing, right? Because it helps them understand the information more effectively, right? So that's the core of all this. We gotta understand that first, so let's start talking about what are the benefits, right? So we know this is a shift in communication. What are you going to get from this? And this is where I want to kind of get Jeff and Tristan to start chiming in because you guys have a ton of firsthand experience with this. But I think one of the first examples or one of the first benefits you're going to get from getting your team to start using video is that you're going to build more reach for your own brand, right? You're going to get in front of more local consumers. Um, you're going to have more recruitment opportunities. I mean, th this is a big one I think that gets overlooked is what do you think other agents think when they see that all the agents at your company are starting to put videos out there, right? They're going to wonder what's going on. They're going to wonder what it is that you're teaching them that's allowing them to start to take this step, right? You're going to have some people reach out to you and start asking questions, right? So it's an attraction-based form of recruiting. You don't have to go out to people and say, hey, we're going to teach all of our agents how to use video. Do you want to come work with us because we're cutting edge? Instead, they see what's happening and they're going to be drawn to your brand, which is a much more powerful place to recruit from. Um, another one that I want to hammer here, and then I, I want to ask uh, Jeff and Tristan for some of their uh, personal examples, is this is also a way to differentiate yourself from the iBuyers and the discounters, right? Um, I was just reading earlier today on Inman that uh, Compass actually had to cut their IPO. So they're, they're going to raise significantly less money than they hoped for um, because there's not much of an appetite for their business model on Wall Street, right? What is Wall Street like right now? They like the iBuyers. They're giving the iBuyers massive valuations. They like the discounters, right? Those companies are doing really well on Wall Street and the more traditional brokerage models are struggling. And that doesn't mean that's going to happen forever, but this is one of the things you can do to differentiate yourself, right? You want your agents to be seen as the local expert. If they're communicating through video, that makes it much easier to establish themselves as that local expert. And that is one significant way to differentiate yourself versus the iBuyers, versus the discounters, right? Because they aren't going to be able to compete with your brand. The brand is really going to be the thing that differentiates you. So um, Jeff, I know you have an interesting uh, sort of approach to this with sort of incorporating brand without talking about it. Um, so I was going to see if you could maybe give us some pointers on how you've gotten, obviously you've done it yourself, but also got a lot of your team to start doing this too. Uh, what are some of the, the approaches that you use? In terms of, yeah, well, first of all, as, as a leader, um, that first thing I want to call out to everybody who's on here, who's in that in either a leader now or aspires to be a leader is, is lead by example. You can't stand up in front of your group and tell them to use video if you're not using video yourself. So it starts with you. It starts with you uh, using video to probably communicate with them. And that's Nick, that's really where, where I started. I started two places. One was, was Facebook lives because back then the algorithm that, that mattered, it doesn't matter as much anymore. But second was internal communication. Um, mm. You know, I have, especially nowadays where we're uh, granted, I have a team all over the country, but a lot of you have local teams and you're not even seeing each other anymore. And so just communicating internally like that, it goes, goes a long, long way. Uh, I think that's that's the absolute best place to start. Is that is that what you were referring to, or were you wanting me to go down a different path? No, that's great. Yeah, I mean, we're and we're going to get into to some of these more specifics as we go in the presentation today. But you know, I think that's uh, I, one, the one thing I did want you to talk about a little, Jeff, is is kind of how you incorporate branding into your videos without mentioning the brand. I mean, you're doing it right now. I can oh, see yeah. at least two or three cases of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's my well. 
It's definitely my style. I, I, I think the reality is, is this, and I use this analogy sometimes when I'm, when I'm explaining branding on social media to people, or when I'm coaching them is that, you know, when you go to, when you go to buy a car, for example, and you show up to the car dealership and you really just want to walk around the lot and look at cars and you cringe and almost want to run the other direction. When you see that guy or gal walk out the front door of the building, because you know, they're about ready to try to sell you. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same concept when video of any kind, if you lead or you start talking about yourself, your stats, your business, for the most part, people are going to run and want to run the other direction. But if you come to them and bring them value of whatever, whatever that is, whether it's just talking about something that you're passionate about or like Tristan, where, you know, you're, you're probably teaching kindness, but he's not, he's not selling anything. He's just giving you something of value, but guess what? He's reminding you who he is and what he does because he's probably wearing a hat with his logo on it. And that's exactly what I do. That's just a subtle way of reminding people and selling without selling is, is, is the way I would describe it. Cool. Love it. So the next, the next section we have here on the slide is obviously that, you know, it's going to grow your brand and your reach, but a big part of this is obviously it's going to grow your agent's businesses, right? And so the two areas that I think, you know, we, we really want to emphasize, and there's a lot of areas that video can have an impact on their business, but number one is better customer service, right? Um, I cannot emphasize that enough that video reduces miscommunication, right? This is a way to essentially eliminate as much of the potential miscommunication, especially during the real estate transaction, right? I mean, this is a big, complicated, um, sometimes very intimidating process that their clients are going through. And so anything you can do to help them communicate more effectively with their customers is going to improve their customer service. And it's ultimately that's going to result in more repeat business and more referrals. And I actually want to give you a quick example of, of something one of our students did the other day. Um, which I thought was really smart. So we teach our, our students how to use one-to-one -one video messaging, right? So it's one of the easiest forms of video. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about it later today. But what she decided to do is she came up with this, this kind of cute little message, you know, comparing toilet paper shortages and housing shortages. And I'm sure we've all kind of heard that analogy already. Um, but she basically reached out and she sent an individual message to a bunch of people in her sphere saying, hey, here's what's going on. There's the shortage of houses, housing prices are going up as a result. You know, if you've been thinking about selling, if you've been thinking about, fit, you know, at least looking into what your home might be worth in the market, like now is the time to do it. And if you know anybody else that's thinking about that as well, I'd love to meet them. Well, within just one day, she had generated four listing appointments from her existing database, right? These weren't new leads. She didn't have to go out and do any sort of aggressive lead gen to get it but she got four appointments from her database. I checked in with her a few days later. She'd also got an additional buyer lead by that time. She had two more people to nurture that were thinking about buying a little bit further down the road. And she'd had several more people tell her that they were out there spreading the message, asking around to their, their friends and family to see who was thinking about selling, right? Now, why does that happen? Why is this so powerful? I mean, she didn't just send an email. She had to send these videos, right? Well, it's a human connection. It's a, it's a meaningful interaction. It's personalized. It's an experience that the people are paying attention to, right? So it's going to lead to more referrals. It's going to lead to more, to more deals captured. Um, we've seen people double and sometimes triple their lead conversion rates by implementing video versus other forms of follow-up. Um, there's just so many different ways to do this. And I guess to kind of wrap things up on this slide, I mean, Tristan, do you have anything else that you would add in terms of things you, you've seen your team do or... Um, results that they've been able to get as a result of using video? I think your attitude is your brand and nobody's going to know if you've got a great attitude or something different about you. Nobody's going to know about it if you don't put it out there. So I think that's important to just realize that when you're when you're creating these videos, make sure that you're that you're always thinking along those lines. So think of how you want to make people feel. I don't think we ever take the time to think about that, Nick, before we shoot a video or before we go on these meetings, right? How do we want to make people feel in the video, in, in everything, in all of our communication? So that's the only thing I would add because you guys were right on point. Cool. I love it. Yeah, it's a good point. I, we need to think more about that before we start these webinars. I, mean, I think we're trying to make people feel good, but you know, I'm sure well, we I feel do good. a better job. Feel as long as you feel good, that's, you know, that's my measuring post. So, you know, we're good to go. <laughs> All right, let's move on. We got, we got some other stuff for you here. So 
Next thing I want to talk about is, you know, we see some of the benefits. We see that this is, this is an important thing. I think most people that would attend a webinar about getting your agents to make more video probably already believe that video is important. So let's talk a little bit about why it's not happening, right? Because I think understanding some of these roadblocks that, that your agents and your teams might be running into can be really helpful, right? Because um, we're going to help them overcome these things. And I'm actually, you know, by the end of this presentation, we're going to give you a couple simple steps you can take. Um, that will sort of disarm a lot of these things, right? They really don't, a lot of the reasons people are so scared of video um, are ultimately pretty irrational and we can address those in a pretty easy way. But there's a few things that stand out that we've seen hundreds and hundreds of different times, right? Number one, this is always number one, is they're self-conscious about how they look and sound on camera, right? We get this all the time. This, this is actually, you know, for, for us, I mean, um, this can be one of the bigger challenges because, uh, you know, for instance, we're a little bit younger. So some of our older students will say, well, I mean, you guys are just younger. And so you like how you look and sound on camera. And we'll always say, when I first started doing this, I was uncomfortable too, right? There's just something weird about seeing yourself in a video because we're not used to seeing ourselves in that context. In fact, here's the irony of it is that if you know what you're doing, you can look and sound better in a video than you do in person. Because when you go out to meet with somebody and you sit down face to face with them, you can't control the lighting in that room, right? You can't control the acoustics or the background sound or any of the other stuff that's going on. You can control all that in a video, right? We just don't think about that. We don't, we don't see a mirror in front of us for the entire time that we're having a meeting with somebody else or otherwise freak out about how we look there too. So these are, these are irrational fears. And the truth is with just a little bit of education on how to control your lighting and how to control your sound, you can go from this being a fear to actually being a strength, right? Because it's easy to control what you look like. So that's one thing that's holding people back. That's definitely something you're going to hear from your agents as you're encouraging uh, more of this. Another one we see a lot of is they just don't know how to do it, right? Um, you would think we've got this, this, like I said, it's a camera, it's in our pocket. It's I my mean, mind literally shoots. I've got a camera in here that'll shoot 8K video, not even 4K video. It's even more uh, HD than that, which is totally unnecessary, obviously. But so you would think we got these, these fancy little things in our pockets, we'd be able to use them. Well, that's not true. In fact, a lot of people have never shot a video of themselves with their phone. Maybe they've shot some videos of their family or they've gone out to a concert and recorded a little bit of it but that's just simply not something that they're that used to doing. So understanding the technology is important. Um, another one that blocks people is what to say when they're on camera. The truth is there's a million things you can talk about that really shouldn't be hard. Um, but in a lot of cases, maybe that's the problem. They're not sure how to pick from all the different things that they could talk about, right? So knowing what to say is really a challenge. Um, how do they get their videos in front of the right people? So we, we talk a lot about doing one-to-one -one video first, and we're going to emphasize that several times today. Um, but that just goes to show a lot of times they're thinking about the wrong things when they first get started. If I don't know how to shoot a decent video of myself, I don't need to think about how I'm going to get it in front of a whole bunch of different people, right? That's kind of putting the cart before the horse a little bit. So helping people understand in what order they should be concerned about these things is also important. And I try to make the analogy a lot of, you know, if you were to go out, and uh, tell somebody that they need to start blogging to support their business before they'd ever learned how to write in the first place, that wouldn't make any sense, right? They would be completely intimidated because they don't even know the basic steps to, to get it done. Well, that's exactly what we're telling people when we say, hey, we're going to start a YouTube channel or hey, we're going to start posting social media videos and try to get in front of thousands of people when they've never sent a video message, when they've never turned the camera on and pointed at themselves and recorded something, right? So we want to start simple. We want to work them up. And, and these are the things that tend to really trip people up. Um, and then the final one I'll say is they don't realize how easy it can be to see results. And again, this is, this is the one I'm going to kind of keep honing in on today um, is that with one-to-one -one video, which we're going to talk more about, they can get results very quickly without having to be very good at video, all right? And what's going to happen is that as someone sees results quickly, they're going to want to do more of that thing. However, I do want to put a little bit of fear behind that point because if they wait, this will get harder. And it's not going to get harder to do. It's going to be harder to get results because the more people that start using a new form of communication or a new marketing technique, the noisier it gets. 
and the less innovative and interesting it becomes to the recipient, right? So if right now, of all the businesses I interact with, only two or 3% of them are sending me video messages. I think it's really cool. It's exciting. I love those companies. I'm gonna respond to them. It's a really great way to engage with me. But in another few years, if most businesses are sending me video messages, I'm still gonna appreciate it, but it's not going to be as exciting, right? Because it's gonna be something that I expect. It's not gonna differentiate those companies anymore. So. That's one thing I really want you to understand is that as your agents are overcomplicating this and they're making it into a mountain that they have to climb when they really shouldn't be, they're actually uh, making it harder for themselves to get results the longer that they wait, right? So if we can start them with some simple steps, um, which we're going to be talking about today, I think we're going to get them results quickly and then they're going to build that momentum as they go. All right, so here's the three steps, right? We started off the presentation by telling you we're gonna give you three ways to get your agents to make more video. And we're gonna talk about each of these in a little bit more depth. Number one, and I think this is one that Jeff and Tristan have done an incredibly good job of, and I think they can give us some really good examples on, is normalizing video communication, right? Making the idea that video is a form of communication, something that your agents can't help but accept because you're doing it and, and doing it so consistently. So that's going to be number one. Number two is to start simple and give them easy and early wins, right? So we've already started to talk about that with the video messaging. That's going to be where we, we really hone in on that particular topic. And then the third one is just removing as much friction with making video as possible. Unfortunately, one of the biggest challenges of video is that it does require some other things, right? It requires um, at least a phone with a decent camera, but once you get going, it might require a light, it might require a microphone, it might require a room where there's not a bunch of background noise, right? I mean, that's one of the things we run into trying to make videos at home with other people is that sometimes that noise interferes. So removing that friction, giving them an environment where it makes it really easy to make video, um, encouraging them, uh, making it normal, making it a regular party business, all these things are gonna make it much, much easier to not just get a few agents to make this transition, but to make it a normal thing for the people in your company. And over time, you're going to see more and more and more people jumping on the bandwagon and the benefits that come from that, right? So let's start here. Um, this is this is one that I'm going to ask Jeff first, um, because I think, you you know, Jeff, I've, I've literally seen some of your team doing this stuff. But how did you over the past few years start to normalize video communication to the point where your team uh, felt like they were they were sort of compelled to start using it? Yeah. So I think, I think one of the best, the best ways to answer that is, is we, again, we put the tools in front of them to use. So for example, you can use an app like a Marco Polo or Volley. Uh, those are hmm. two examples of apps where it's all video communication. And so what we did was we created internal groups, uh, which is essentially a text thread with everybody on it, except it's all video. And so you're, you're putting them into an environment where they're in a safe zone and they can get used to pushing play and talking to the camera and seeing themselves. And those are the kind of simple things that usually uh, will help uh, anybody, uh, you know, basically work through their object, the objections that they have for themselves. Uh, it's Marco Polo is one of them. Uh, that one's been around for a while. Volley is another one, V-O-L-L-E-Y, just like volley and volleyball. Um, that's one suggestion. Another thing that we like to do, that we started using a long time ago was BombBomb. Uh, so it, it email video communication. You can use it internally. You can use it one-on-one -on -one communication with your customers. And here's here's the way I would always describe it to, to our, our, our employees was that Listen, you have no problem meeting a customer at the office and sitting in a conference room across the table and discussing the terms of the transaction with them. So what is the difference to sending them an email uh, as if they're sitting across the room from you, but you're looking at a camera and talking to it? It's not putting it out to the masses. It's one to one. And it gets you more comfortable talking to the camera. And frankly, what you'll find is that yeah, people will actually, or agents will actually end up getting, you, the feedback will be phenomenal from their clients. And they'll say, thank you so much for explaining that to me. Um, we've even won deals as a result of it, where they said, we're going to use you because, because you explained it with a video, which made it un easier to understand than reading a two paragraph email. And so those are the kind of things. And then obviously when, when you're showing tonality and, and, and uh, enthusiasm and excitement, like for an accepted contract, for example, 
gosh, what better way? I mean, I, I would argue that it's better than picking up the phone and calling them because they can see you and it just, it, you know, it, it makes you more memorable to your client. And so, uh, that's the way I would start by normalizing, but it starts with you once again, as a leader. And, and I see, um, I think it was, um, was it McKinley, uh, who said that, you know, how my, my team struggles with being self-conscious and, you know, it starts with you. It, it, it truly does because we all feel the same way. I still do. I mean, I, I know I'm not, you know, Brad Pitt and Hollywood material. Uh, I know that I, I don't even necessarily, I don't even love my voice. But, at, but once you start doing it and you start to see the results that come with it, 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 it gives you confidence. It just absolutely gives you confidence. And then you also realize that it's, it's 10 times more efficient. It's more efficient for me to press play, talk for a minute, then take five to 10 minutes to type the same thing out. Um, and so there's a, lot of, there's a lot of reasons why I think it's a, it's a great play. Yeah, I love that. And, and a question you know, for either of you guys would be, when you first start doing this, right? Because I, I think that's where a lot of people really struggle is like, all right, how do I get them going, right? Because if, if I get somebody to make their first few videos, usually that's going to kind of get the, the ball rolling a little bit and it's going to be much easier to make the next, the next three after that, right? So when you were doing this, uh, you know, when you send these video messages, like so if you're using Bali or, or Marco Polo, you know, were, was it just organic that people would respond with video or did you have to do anything to kind of encourage that behavior? Or, or what would you guys recommend in terms of getting those first few uh, video touches to happen? Tristan? Oh, that was for me? Oh, I can go. Yeah, I can go either way. I thought it was both. a continuation to his. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, sure. So I think one of the things that you can do, and one of the things I still do to this day, and we've been doing this for a long time, and then adoption is still not where I want it to be, uh, but a lot of it is 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 handholding, and so in many cases, it's literally setting up one on ones and sitting with them and helping them overcome that fear, helping them talk through, helping them maybe script a message, helping them work through various hacks so they can again get out of their own way. Uh, and so, you know, we've literally had to do that with people where we'll sit, we'll sit with them and say, let's practice the bomb bomb. Or here's what I've done with people. I've sat in one office, they sat in another office. And I said, here's what you're going to do. You're going to open an email and you're, we're going to have a conversation via bomb bomb because I just want you to be able to know how to use the software, right? Know how to use it. Cause I don't want that to be your excuse. And you're sending it to me, right? I'm right here. You're sending it and you just kind of get them to be comfortable um, listen, you can't force this on people, but as a broker, as a leader, I mean, you can't deny that if your brokerage is the one that does not embrace and, and encourage and provide the tools and resources to, to do video, you are behind, like you're going to be behind. And so, um, you, you're not going to force, you know, if you have, if you have 50 agents, you might get 10 adopters, but then that's great. Embrace those 10. Some of them are going to have some amazing success stories that come from it. Then use that as your social proof amongst their peers to hopefully pull others out of the weeds. You're not, you're still never going to do it. There's going to be some that are deathly afraid of it and they just won't do it. And that's okay. It's not the end of the world. Uh, but still you as a leader using it just yourself, using it with communication between you and your team, you know, it also makes, you know, remember they're like your customer. It makes you a better, more powerful leader, uh, because the same thing goes, you know, when they get that, when they have that successful transaction that just went down and you want to send them a congratulations, man, send them a video. You know, when you want to send a happy birthday video, send them a video. When they, when they had their anniversary with your brokerage, send them a video. Uh, those kind of things go a long way. And, um, that's, that's, uh, that's my two cents on it or Love seven it. cents. Seven cents. I think we Even can better. simplify it a little bit more, man. So, I think the fact that, and you said this, Nick, that we have this device right here. Right. If you want to just practice in, in the simplest forms without having to download Marco Polo or Bali or anything along those lines, just try testing out sending a video to your family first, brother, mm -hmm. sister, mother, father. And just so you know, it feels freaking uncomfortable doing that. Mm -hmm. But if you can get past that uncomfort, that you have at the very beginning, you start breaking into that and saying, okay, this isn't too bad, right? So instead of sending a message by text, try shooting a video and sending it to the people that you already know. It'll get you into 
understanding that you look the way you do, and that's not going to change, right? That's the number one reason we don't do video. Right. But I think that's in its simplest form what you should start doing so that you can get used to where the world is heading right now. You, you know, one of the things I just said to an agent yesterday, Tristan, that you just sparked for me was, um, number one, like diet and exercise. We all know we need to be doing it, but it's uncomfortable and it sucks, right? But do you want to be healthy? Do you want to be in shape? Do you want to lose weight? You got to get uncomfortable, right? So do you want to grow your business? Do you want to create more potential opportunities? You just have to accept on comfort. And here's what I told this agent. I said, imagine if we were cognizant when we were one years old, learning to walk, we'd quit. We would have quit trying because we would have got pissed because it takes like six months to a year to learn how to walk. Or imagine if we were cognizant of learning how to talk or learning how to, you know, learning how to write, learning how to read, right? We don't have the, the mental capacity back. Thank God we didn't because we would have a world of crawlers if we did. Right. And so it's, it's the same concept that you, you, you know, and I think if you convey it that way to people, it makes them think crap. Yeah. I mean, like I've just got to get over being uncomfortable or I just have to accept that the world is going to pass me by. And so I better figure out something to overcome that. And that's, it, it resonated with this particular agent. So I thought I would share that. Great. I love that. Yeah. I'll have to start using that one. Cool. Well, let's see. So uh, we got a couple other ideas here for you and just some quick tips. And I want to move on to our, our second suggestion here, but we got some great stuff from, from both Jeff and Tristan. So the next, next thing I would really focus on here in terms of normalizing, because I think we, we talked a lot about you using video communication and, and you know, leadership, right? You got to lead by example. We're never going to get around that. Um, but the other thing is that you can highlight the agents that are already leading on this front, right? And when I look at most average brokerages at this point, you almost certainly have one or two agents that are doing video and they probably feel kind of like outsiders in some ways. And, and I've seen this happen in brokerage was where there's one guy who's been on YouTube for two or three years and, you know, people are always asking him, well, what's that doing for you? And you actually making any money? And, you know, for a long time, they probably weren't. And then all of a sudden they started to, and now they're probably actually getting some really good results if they've been doing it that long. Right. But they're probably not out there telling everybody else about it because everybody was such a jerk to them for six months or 12 months when they first got started. So you need to be the one to champion that. Right. So find those people, um, whether or not they're using video internally, or they're doing a little more external with social media or YouTube or whatever it is, and, you know, compliment them, support them, highlight them, um, ask them to, to do a training for the other agents, you know, make what they're doing uh, clearly something that you approve of, right? And I think that's another way that even if you're not necessarily ready to get on YouTube and start being a social media star, which you never actually have to do, that's not how you need to approach this. You just need to be using video in some form, right? As long as you're communicating with it, then you are leading by example, and then highlight the people that are taking it to that next step, right? So um, keep it positive. You know, I wouldn't worry about critiquing anything anybody's doing, especially when they first get started. If they just made their first five videos and they're absolutely garbage, that's fine. That's completely normal. In fact, it'd be a little bit weird if they were really good on camera from day one. Um, so encourage them, be positive, you know, keep pushing them in the right direction where you can start to give them some critical feedback is when they've been doing it for a couple of years and they're starting to get kind of cocky about how it's going, right? That's when you can be, you know, critical about getting more technical on their shots and things like that. But initially keep it 100% positive and you'll get better results that way, right? So that's number one, that's normalize it. Let's talk about number two. This is one that I'm particularly excited about. It's something that we're seeing some really good results um, in business video school itself. And that is to start simple and give agents easy and early wins, all right? So the key here, and th this is something that I'll be honest, I mean, I've been helping real estate agents with video in their business for about five years, all right? And there's only been two particular things that I feel have actually sort of met this criteria. And the most recent version, I think, is a much better fit than the first one. So I'm going to tell you about both of them. The first one was that when we first got into making videos with agents, the way we approached it was, hey, video is a marketing tool, right? Which I've definitely changed my mind on over time, but that was the only thing we knew it for. So we would bring agents into our studio. We'd, we'd write a script with them. We'd have them sit down in front of a teleprompter with a camera and read that script back into the camera. We had professional lighting, professional equipment, you know, audio, all that kind of stuff. They looked be their best. 
They sounded their best. We made them a really, really nice video advertisement. And then we would put it on Facebook and we'd run an ad and we'd show it to everybody in their sphere of influence. And about 50% of those agents within one month had gotten a transaction from that video ad, right? Now that blew my mind. I, would, I did not expect any of them to get a transaction that quickly because it was really more of a branding play, right? They're just sort of putting themselves out there and letting their audience get to know them. But they got results because people paid attention. They actually watched the whole video. They listened to everything they said. When they said at the end, hey, call me if you're thinking about buying or selling, some people actually picked up the phone and called them and they got tremendous results, right? But the one part that that ultimately violated is that it wasn't simple. That process of them coming to the studio and getting all you know dolled up and making sure they look really good on camera and all that, it was intimidating. And so we didn't see a lot of people come back and do it that frequently even though it showed results, right? So many years and sort of iterations later, there's a lot of different things that we've worked with agents to help them try. But what we found is that it's one-to-one -one video messaging. That is where this starts, right? And you've already started to hear about that. We've already been emphasizing it several times, but I wanted to give you just a few things you can do and the few things you should focus on to get this up and running for your agent. So the thing to keep in mind is that even though they're just sending a video with their phone, if you can help them learn some of the basics, some of the very fundamental skills that go into making a decent video first, they're going to feel a lot better about the videos they're sending, right? We don't want them to send something that they feel looks and sounds terrible because they're not going to want to keep doing it. That being said, this does not need to take, you know, weeks and months and years to teach them, right? We're only talking about some really, really fundamental things and then get them sending video messages. In fact, when we teach our students to do this, they're making videos after their very first one hour class and they're sending video messages to their sphere within four classes, right? They don't have to be professional. They don't even know how to edit videos yet at that point, right? Because that's not necessary, but we do want to give them a little bit of education to get started, right? So it's going to be things like holding the phone correctly, right? And what I mean by that is not how to hold it with your hand. That is part of it. But it's also where do you show up on the screen? You know, is your is your face at the top of the video, the bottom, the side? You know, what's the right way to do that, right? So teach them how to make sure that they're framed correctly, make sure that they look their best. There's a trimming feature. So almost every phone that we've ever worked with in the in the camera app itself, if you record a video, you can trim the beginning and the end. Why does that matter? Well, that means now I don't have to hit record and then start talking immediately. That can be a big um, intimidation factor for a lot of people. So now we're showing them ways to clean up their video, but we're not showing them how to add graphics and change the coloration and do all the other fancy stuff because it's not necessary. Um, another one is finding good natural lighting. This is one of the easiest wins out there is just helping people understand how light works, right? And all I mean by that is just, it matters the direction that the light is coming from, right? If you were to go into any three of our rooms right now and look at our setup, we all have lights out here in front of us. And I would guess that we all have our overhead lights turned off, or at least I know I do, right? So the reason for that is that that's how you properly light a video, right? The light should be coming from generally the same direction as the camera. And the easiest way to do this is to just stand in front of a window, right? You don't want the sun shining directly through the window. It should be, um, you know, overcast or, you know, it's, it's just sort of ambient light. But that's the best light out there. It's natural. It's going to be white balance. It's going to look really good on your skin. And it's going to light your face evenly. The worst kind of lighting is to have an, a light right above you and then no other light in the room, right? That's going to create shadows on your face. It's going to make your face look its absolute worst. And guess what? That's how most homes and offices are set up. So just knowing that one thing, telling your agents, hey, why don't you walk over to the window, stand in front of the window and record your video message. Boom. Now they look two or three times better than they did before. Now they're going to be a lot more excited to send that message, right? Um, we, we teach them a couple tips on maybe going live on Facebook, a little bit of advice maybe on getting onto social platforms just so they know the basics of how to do it. But that's it, all right? You don't need to teach them a whole bunch of other stuff. And this is why, like one thing we're seeing right now a lot in the is there's a lot of pressure to start doing things like uh, you know YouTube or TikTok. And those are those are huge opportunities by all means. But for most people, if you've never made a single video of any kind, Getting started on those platforms is incredibly complicated. There's a lot of stuff to learn and it's over complicating the process, right? So give them some basic tips. It doesn't need to take more than a couple lessons. And then you focus on the video messaging, right? 
So I wanted to, to just talk a little bit about um, kind of how to do that in a second. I want to mention just a couple of mistakes that we've seen agents run into as they get into this learning process so that you can help them avoid these things, right? Number one is they don't need any equipment. I have seen literally dozens of people equipment before they knew that they needed it as a form of procrastination, right? Because, oh, well, now I have a gimbal. I got to learn how my gimbal works before I can start making videos. Oh, I bought this microphone. I bought this light. They don't need any of that stuff, right? I just told you how to get good lighting from a window. You don't need equipment. So that's one major mistake to keep an eye out for. Another is people going out and hiring uh, videographers and making really high-end professional videos before they've ever done anything simpler. And the reason I think that can be such a drastic mistake is that it, it sets the expectation that video has to be high quality production, right? It sets these expectations that I'm going to have to invest. I'm going to have to spend money. It's going to be something I have to work my way up to. And then if that first video doesn't perform well, they tend to tell themselves that video doesn't work. And that's just not simply true, right? So that's something we want to avoid. So again, help them understand that they should start simple and avoid getting complex too early on. And then the last one is they don't practice enough, right? That's, that's a, something we see in the school even. I mean, we have a homework assignment after every single one of our classes, and we really encourage people to practice the things they're learning. And some of them still don't even do it, right? Because I get it. It's intimidating. It's work. It's something else to have to worry about. But the thing is, if you don't practice at each step, so if you learn to send really simple, basic video messages, and you don't go out and send at least a few dozen of them, then you're not going to remember the things you've learned, right? You're not going to internalize the techniques. You're not going to be able to work out the kinks. And then if you try to take the next step and go on to more complex forms of video, you're just simply not going to be ready, right? So helping your agents understand these things and, and keeping an eye out for these, right? So if you start to talk about video and somebody goes, ooh, I've been thinking about buying some stuff and they're about to run out and get on Amazon and spend a thousand bucks, catch them before they do that and challenge them to get used to sending video messages first. And what you'll find is that there's a lot of equipment that you just really don't need, right? There's all kinds of stuff I've seen people buy that is just unnecessary. And, and you know, honestly, you can shoot a pretty darn good video with these modern phones. Now. I just got this one a couple months ago. It's like having a gimbal built in. This, the footage is all smooth. The audio is really clean. It's really incredible what you can do with some just some basic fundamentals here. So. I don't know. I think those are the major mistakes that Jeff or Tristan, do you guys have any other ideas on, on mistakes that you've seen your team make that's kind of held them back from, from getting started with video? I think the number one mistake that, that we all make in all businesses is just thinking that we'll get to it, right? Mm -hmm. Like there was Jeff, Jeff, you posted something that says my crappy video is better than the one you didn't make, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think that goes for for everything that we do, right? Whatever it is that you do, even if it's crappy, it's better than somebody else who isn't doing that. In this case, it's video. And so this is where it's okay if you screw up a bunch of times, you know, take video shots of yourself, keep them on your phone. Don't ever share them with anybody mm -hmm. until you get comfortable. So I think that the biggest mistake we all make is just not shooting the video because we think we're not good enough. And yeah, of course you're not good enough. They're going back to the analogy that Jeff made, right? Imagine if we knew that uh, we we had problems walking, right? Now, as, <laughs> as older people, you'd be like, oh, you know what? This stuff's too hard. I'm just not going to do it. It's just, ah, I'm just going to crawl everywhere I go. It's the same <laughs> thing with video. So it goes back to the simplest thing. Love it. So I, we had a comment come through that I think is kind of funny. So I always tell my people that they don't want to look like they're on Dateline and not to put a light directly behind them. So it's also a really good point, Katie, that, uh, you know, I think overhead light, I, I think, is the worst in terms of just making yourself look bad. But if you put a light behind you, you're going to make yourself much darker because that light is going to dominate the camera uh, and it's going to almost make you look like you're in, intentionally anonymous. Right. So it's another bad place to put a light um, is definitely shining directly behind you there. So we're going we're gonna to pick up speed here. we got about 15 minutes left. I want to make sure we end on time. Um, the one thing, you know, in terms of how you approach this, this is pretty common sense, but I do like to emphasize it, is really just focus on the practice side of this, right? I mean, the knowledge is easy to acquire. There's a million videos on YouTube on how to start making videos. 
The companies that make these tools, they certainly provide plenty of tutorials. That's not what's holding people back. What's holding them back is the thing that we've probably uh, emphasized enough at this point, which is to just get the phone out and record the video and get it done, right? So that's what I would really focus on is focus on creating a safe space, right? Create an environment uh, where people are going to be comfortable experimenting with video, right? So if you have a, a naysayer in your, in, your, uh, in your group who just, you know, craps on all the people that are trying to make videos, don't include them, all right? You know, don't, don't bring that negative energy in. You want this to be something where the people that are experimenting are gonna feel like it's okay to make some mistakes. Um, be willing to give them feedback on their videos and, and just have it so that no one else ever even sees them if that's what they need. Um, you do have to provide some support here, but if you encourage the practice, they will get better quickly, all right? I think what, what most people realize is once I get over that initial fear of just making a video and I've done a few, they're going to start to get creative, right? They're going to start to have a much better presence on camera. Most of these people would be willing to go do a presentation in front of a small group of people. That's no different than making a video, right? So once they start to realize that through practice, they're going to get more comfortable. And that's when the creativity comes out, right? Once I know that this doesn't have to be a scary thing anymore, I'm going to be a little bit more willing to take chances and, and try some things, right? So the last point I want to kind of make on, on the second topic here is that one-to-one -one video is really where you want to get started, right? Um, this is an enormous opportunity. I think we, we kind of touched on it so much before we got to the slide that I'm not sure we have to say much else about it, but there are several places where this can have an immediate impact in your business, right? Um, number one, I already mentioned was, was our example of one of our students who started sending video messages to her database and got four listing appointments in just like a day. That's incredible, right? Imagine if you got just a small fraction of your agents to get out there and do that in the next couple of days, right? I mean, this is how this stuff works. This stuff cuts through the noise. People will pay attention to a personalized video message that they receive in a way that they don't pay attention to most other forms of communication, right? Um, if, you're, if they're like me, they're not even answering their phone anymore if they don't have your number saved. So there are some of these older school forms of communication just aren't working as well. So it's going to result in more referrals. It's going to result in more repeat business. Um, it's going to provide better customer service. I mean, that one you really shouldn't go overlooked. I mean, if you can avoid a miscommunication, if you can make someone's experience just that much better because you're using a more effective form of communication, that's a no-brainer, right? And, and like Jeff pointed out earlier, I actually think it can be quicker once you're used to it to send a video message than to do almost anything else, right? I mean, uh, it's, it's quicker than texting somebody because it's hard to type that all out on your phone. It's quicker than sitting down to write an email. It's quicker than even calling them sometimes because then you can get caught in a back and forth you didn't intend. So it can also be a really efficient uh, form of communication. And then the last one I will mention is that we've also seen this increase lead conversion by 200% in some cases, right? So this is the kind of thing where if you start responding to your leads or you know your agents start responding to their leads that they're getting, especially if you're providing them leads, right? If you're in some sort of relationship with your agents where you're giving them leads of any kind, you should probably be insisting that they're following up with video on those leads because they will convert more of them. And so I was talking to, to one of our buddies, Grant Wise, the other day, he runs a company called Whitley that, that helps automate some of these lead conversion processes. And he was pointing out the fact that it's at this point, it's not so much about speed to lead. It's not about who calls the lead first. It's about speed to relationship, right? These people are often signing up in multiple places. They're in a whole bunch of different CRMs. It's the agent that helps that person get to know them and forms a relationship and forms a bond by communicating the most effective way possible that's ultimately going to get that deal, right? So if you can help them understand that stuff, these one-to-one -one video messages can be absolutely impactful. They don't require any tools. I mean, there, there's a few different things that you can, you can do here. I think we've hammered this enough. I'm going to just kind of skip past that because I want to show this slide. There's a, a bunch of different ways you can send one-to-one -one video. So the one I want to hone in on for you for just a second is that middle category, the messenger app. So if you look at the Facebook, the Instagram, and the LinkedIn messenger app on the phone, they all have a video record button in them, right? So all you have to do is hold your finger down. It's going to start recording. You can say whatever you want. They do have relatively short time limits, but that's probably a good thing. And then you let it go and you hit send and you just sent a video message to that person. It, it's free. It's easy. There's really no excuse not to use it. And think about it. If you're that customer and you see on your Facebook messenger, a little notification pops up and there's a little 
preview of a video in it. And especially if your agents are savvy enough to maybe write the name of the person on a piece of paper and hold it up when the video starts or something to, to make it clear that it's a personal message. Most people will watch that just simply out of curiosity, right? Now, once everyone is doing it, it won't be as it won't be as impactful anymore. So there is some timeliness to this, but that middle category is free. Okay, it does not require any expenses. There are no extra steps to take. They just need to be doing it, right? Now, obviously, you can do these through uploading a video to one of these these platforms. You could put a video on YouTube and send it. I think that's messier. I would go straight for the apps. And then there are also bomb bomb and and dub and things like that. Um, I don't know if you guys have any ideas on other other ways to send videos. I mean, there's text, right? So you can you can often text a video, um, but we probably covered uh, most of them, I would think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, mean, I would say so. Wanna, if you want to get it pretty creative, if you won't want to use bomb bomb or dub or for your phone for any reason, you can upload it to YouTube and use the link, right? And then True. start not start pushing people there, but then that would have to be more of a content video, not a hello, how are you doing video? Right. Yeah. So you probably don't, I mean, you could, I guess you could put it up as an unlisted video on YouTube, but you know, we're getting, we're getting a little fancy at that. I, I, I do do that a lot. If I don't want it to be out to the masses, I just want to send it to a group. Yeah, I do that. Okay, cool. Well, some good ideas there. So yeah, bottom line though, is that there's a lot of options. You really don't need to, you don't need to give people too much here. There's lots of ways to send video messages. And that is something that's changed, right? I mean, if you looked at these apps and these platforms just a few years ago, it was much harder to send a personalized video message to someone. So to some degree, this might be as simple as just letting your teams know that these options are now available. And once they do, naturally, some of them are going to be curious and they're probably going to want to give them a try, right? So it's just, again, about making it as easy as possible. And that's what brings us to the third and final point, which is removing friction from the process, right? Now, I think naturally, I mean, you, you actually got one of the ultimate sort of blessings here in the past 12 months, which is that everyone was forced to use Zoom extensively. Um, we were all using Zoom before that, but now everybody knows about Zoom and everybody had to get on camera at some point, right? So some of the friction has already been removed, right? There's already sort of a, a natural tra a transition happening to this video communication, but there's other things that you can do to make this as easy as possible. The, the number one thing, in my opinion, is before you get out there and worry about trying to build out a studio in your brokerage office or worry about, you know, bringing in training or anything like that, is just start to form a community around this idea, right? So um, a private Facebook group or doing office workshops for planning and filming videos, you know, just really facilitating the process and showing your agents that they're not the only one that's curious about this, Right. For whatever reason, this is something that makes people incredibly uncomfortable. Um, people tend to be afraid to ask questions about it even, right? Because they don't want to sound dumb. They feel like they see their kids making TikTok videos all day and they think, I don't even know how to send a video message. I don't want to ask anybody about it because it's embarrassing. But the truth is most people have those same questions, right? This is just a learning curve that we have to get through. So if you make it clear that, that this is an environment where you want people to ask those questions, where you want them to start engaging, you want them to take chances to experiment, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera it's going to be much more likely to happen, right? So I really think um, like, like a private Facebook group is I, ideal, I think, for this, because not only is it, you know, Facebook is, is built around groups at this point, so they have a pretty robust product, but it's also going to help them practice posting on social media, right? The way you post in a Facebook group is basically the same way you post on any other part of Facebook. And so if they get used to posting their videos into this small, intimate, private group where they're practicing, that's going to be a skill set that transitions very easily to then sharing those videos publicly or on their business page, you know, so on and so forth, right? Um, help them take very small steps. Uh, we've already mentioned this one a couple times, but I can't emphasize this enough. Do not let people start worrying about social media content or getting on YouTube and making, you know, a big following on YouTube when they're first getting started, right? Um, in fact, you should probably create a program that sort of encourages and challenges them to not take those steps too quickly, right? One, one that we see happen a lot is that people want to get into editing right off the bat. They want to start worrying about how, oh man, I want to add graphics and I want to cut out my ums and ahs and I want to add music and all that. That is all good stuff to learn how to do. 
but you don't need to do it in the first few weeks, maybe even the first few months, because the easy wins will come from the one-to-one -one video messages, right? So if they start there and they take these small steps, you know, worry about um, lighting, right? Maybe, maybe do your own experiment, walk around the office at some point, holding up a selfie camera and get a sense of where your best lighting is. And then just tell them to go make their videos in that spot. It might be in front of a window. Um, it might be by a light, you know, that, that's set up for those purposes, whatever it is. Um, but do some really, really small things and then kind of move them up over time. And then when it comes to equipment, or if you do want to have a studio or you want to have something uh, where you're providing some of that equipment to them, just make sure you're providing it at the right time, right? So make sure that they're getting to the point where they're ready and they know that they need the equipment. So if somebody gets to the point where they've sent, you know, hundreds of video messages and now they want to go make a listing video and so they need to use a gimbal, like that's fine, right? They've, they've gotten up to that point and they need that equipment. But if they've never done the video messages and they want to run out and shoot a complex video with a gimbal, that's a, that's a red flag, right? We need to hold them back a little bit and help them take the smaller steps to get there gradually. And what you're going to find is that most people want to move faster than they should. And by holding them back a little bit and making them take the consistent steps, they're going to actually start doing the things that they need to. Um, there's a psychological thing that happens where we all want to dump it, jump into the deep end and try things, you know, a hundred percent from day one, which means that they're almost guaranteed to backfire and fail, which means that we can then write them off and say, Oh, actually, I guess I'm not a video person. So remember that that's often kind of what people are subconsciously doing. And it can be really helpful to, to sort of intentionally hold them back a little bit. Right. All right. So that's, I think that's everything we wanted to go over today. Uh, we are almost out of time, but I did want to mention uh, that part of why we wanted to do this presentation specifically for brokerages today is that we did recently introduce a new version of business video school for brokerages, right? So it includes everything you see on the screen here today. I wasn't intending to do a big pitch for the school or anything like that at the end of this presentation, but we are starting to onboard brokerages into this program. It gives you an unlimited number of seats. So basically every single agent in your company will be able to participate if they want to. Um, if you would like to learn more about that, what I want you to do is just send me a text real quick here. Um, I'll set up a time to hop on Zoom for 20, 30 minutes. I can give you a quick overview of what that includes. Um, and talk about how we might be able to get uh, started with you. Uh, we'll also be able to talk about if you want to go a different direction and you want us to just tell your agents how they can sign up individually, we're happy to do that as well. But just send me a text right now. This is literally my personal phone number, which, you know, maybe I shouldn't do that, but you know, whatever. It's my phone number. Send me a text. Just send me your name um, and I'll get back to you and we'll schedule a time to talk more about the brokerage version of Business Video School. So basically, you know, if we went through this presentation today and you said, you know what? It would be helpful to have somebody facilitate all that for me. It'd be nice if I had all of the trainings ready to go and I just had to hit play and my agents could watch them um, or video. You know, if I, it'd be cool if there's a lot of video scripts that I could share with my agents so I didn't have to come up with those myself. Um, one of my favorite things that we do is our accountability challenges where we split off into different teams inside of the school and we compete to see which team makes the most videos that month. Um, we get 70% of the participants to make a video every single time we do one of those. So it's a really, really great way um, to get people engaged and get them, get them making that content. Anyway, so I think that's about all we got. Um, if we have any questions, we're happy to answer them. And just remember, if you do want to talk more about how Business Video School can help train your agents, just uh, shoot me a text at 636-541-7651. And I will get back to you to schedule a time um, to talk to you a little bit more about what we do. Love it. Cool. If you're a broker or a leader, I think you want this in your business. And I'm happy to share my thoughts uh, privately as well. Feel free to reach out, DM me. We did have a question if we have a second here. Do we have to get off for another webinar, guys? I do, but you guys can stay. I just want to, yeah, you can run. I just wanted to make sure we answer anything that was in here. Um, any tips for virtual backgrounds? My home office is the garage. <laughs> okay. Um, well, Jeff, you and I both have normal actual backgrounds. Do you have hey, any? Hey, well, unshare, unshare and I'll show you. I've got a bunch. Liz, uh -huh. let me see if Liz, are you still on Liz? Uh, let me see here. Yes, you are. Uh, so here, let me show you. So I had some made. So first of all, if you're in Zoom, you can go just go under the camera and you can choose a virtual background. Uh, but I had some made that were branded. I've got a couple, a few different ones, but like you can just be in a, a fake office space like this with, with, a, with a team logo. I've got another one for another one of our platforms. 
um, that we use. We've got different, as you can see, I'm standing in different office space. So depending, I'm not always shooting from my own home office where I actually set up a, um, an actual, uh, an actual good background, like, like this, you know, something that's actually aesthetically pleasing, but you can also just use the stock stuff like this. You could be at the beach, you could be standing in front of, you know, whatever. So um, just play around with it. Just know where it is when you're in Zoom. Just go down to the video button, hit the up, the uh, little arrow going up, choose a virtual background. And you can upload literally anything from the internet as well. I mean, I've seen, I saw people last year this time uh, putting themselves in front of a warehouse of toilet paper and things like that. You can pretty much do anything as long as it fits the, as long as it fits. So uh, my custom background, Simon, were from a, uh, my marketing department. So they just made them for us. You could probably go to Fiverr and just say, hey, uh, go to Fiverr. It probably cost you 15, 20 bucks. Here's my logo. Can you create some virtual backgrounds? And they'll do whatever. And they can do the same thing. Th these aren't actual places. Uh, so like this, uh, I don't know. It's just a, it's just a random backdrop. Um, Nick even asked the other day. Jeff, is this one of your offices in another market? The answer is no. It's just a random image that we grabbed from somewhere. But yeah, anybody can do any of this stuff and you can be standing wherever. Well, as you can see, it's virtual. As you can see, my hands are disappearing. So uh, hopefully that helped. There's a lot of options. Yeah, try just Canva. I mean, if you get on Canva, free, free graphic design tool, um, you can add your logo. They have all kinds of stock images that just look like offices and they're really not that hard to make. Um, so, you know, you can definitely use the standard ones, but so many people do that, you know, people know those are the standards at this point. So I think, I think people like to make their own version. So yeah, lots of options. Yes. Cool. cool. That's it. Good stuff. All right. Anything else? I think that's all the questions that we had here, Jeff. So any yeah, final we thoughts before we going get on. running? Good to go, man. Good. Thanks for being on today, guys. All right. Cool. See everybody later.